You're listening to the Audacious Church Podcast. We know this is a great investment into your life. So tune in, listen up and stay focused. For any more information, visit us online, audaciouschurch.com. Hey everybody, welcome to another Audacious Leadership Podcast. My name is Paul and I'm joined today by Zoe and Catherine. Say hello girls. Hi. Hi. What you're doing is you're getting in on the action of something that we've already started talking about, which is spiritual disciplines. We've talked about four spiritual disciplines in a previous episode. And the point is to wake up the spiritual giant that is in you. And so we talked about the things that you can do. Let me just share this verse with you in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It says this in verse 25 and 24. It says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but... Only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. In the message, it says run to win. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training and they do it to get a crown that won't last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. In other words, because of what we're doing, we have to be disciplined, strict training. Everyone understands if we would run in a marathon, we would do that. And so to... Stand the test of time in our leadership and grow and learn. Then we have to be intentional. We have to grow. We have to Mm. do things. So really what we want to do in this episode is go through another four disciplines. Things that will wake up the spiritual giant in you. And uh, we're trying to empower you. Yeah, Yeah. We're trying to help you grow. Um, We don't know everything that we need to know already. Yeah, yeah. Catherine, how long have you been involved in Christian leadership, in ministry, in, in church? 20 years. 20 years. Zoe? Probably about the same. About 20 years. Um, and there'll be people listening to this who've been in church leadership or, or Christian leadership for even longer, yeah. some fewer. But I think the presence of God and the house of God yeah. is this like awesome yeah. uh, leveler, brings us all together, and yeah. we're all in the same position, which is that we need to grow. Yeah, We need definitely. to learn. So here we go. Four spiritual disciplines. Number one is simplicity. Simplicity. I know it doesn't sound that cool, but actually it's really, really powerful. This is all about stripping back your life yeah. so that the things that are in it are mm. potent. Yeah. They're powerful. Yeah. And they're free to have the impact on your life that they deserve. Mm. As opposed to being crowded out by many other things, the narrative of society these days is um, you got to have more and do more yeah. to be more. So got to get faster broadband, got to get the latest keto diet, got to <laughs> uh, get the latest phone. It's like need more, yeah. got to fit. And we fill our lives with the pursuit of this stuff. Whereas what we're saying is actually a disciplined leader, yeah, someone who's growing, actually pursues less. Mm. And you have to be disciplined, yeah. more disciplined to pursue less than you mm. are to pursue more. Yeah. Because we're so influenced by society yeah. that we do it without thinking. Mm. Um, it's true. There's a challenge. Yeah. Any thoughts, girls? Simplicity? Mm. Yeah, I think we can just overcomplicate life. Yeah. Overcompli- overcomplicate everything, um, even with our finances, our relationships, um, and in s- pulling things back. In, in I do a lot of horse riding. Well, I like to do more <laughs> horse riding when I can. And it's you, like... Well, hold on a minute. You do horse riding? <laughs> yes. Horse riding. Wow. Any horse riding fans, <laughs> give me a shout. We are posh here in the north. We ride horses. Go on. <laughs> Not necessarily ride a posh horse. Oh. <laughs> like horse riding. The horses are posh. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you think that? Yeah. Okay. So enough funny. about horses. Carry on. <laughs> and um, you've got to take a hold of the reins uh-huh. of the horse. Sure. And you have got to take the horse where you want the horse to go. You've got to show the horse who's boss, or it I remember will you horse take you on that. a ride, or and it will, um, or it will, it can feel your fear, and you've got to take the reins, and you've got to tell the horse where to go. And I think the same with your finances, with the same with yeah. our relationships, the same with um, uh, us leading ourselves and leading our own mm. lives, our own households. We've got to take the reins so that our lives become richer, not weaker, yeah. so that we can 
take our lives in the direction that we want them to go. So we're spending time with who we want to spend time with so that we are keeping what is important, important. Yeah, Yeah, keeping the main thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, okay, so basically what you're talking about is um, in order to do that, to take the, the reins of your life, you have to decide what you do want. Yeah. So that that forces the issue on what you don't want. Yeah. As True. opposed to just going after anything or everything. Yeah. yeah. Like if you just let a horse do whatever it wants, you'd go everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. you actually say, no, we're not going yeah. right, we're going left. Yeah. So there's a challenge for this first discipline. Yeah. yeah. Simplicity is, I don't know, write a list. I remember yeah. when we were younger, when we first got married, I remember writing a list. Mm. This is proper cheesy and slightly embarrassing. But I remember writing a list of the people that we really wanted to be friends with. I remember you doing that. Oh, yeah. And I some of the people that, on the yeah. list were people that were, we were already friends with. And we're yeah. like, okay, in 10 years, we still want to be friends mm. with these people. Yeah. But some of the people on the mm. list, we kind of knew them, but they weren't really our friends. Yeah. Mm. And now, 20 years later, some of them, they are our friends. Yeah. Because we decided, we decided we can't yeah. literally yeah. be friends with everybody. Yeah. yeah. Let's, you know... Yeah. choose who we think god mm. is, is is blessing us yeah. with or bring into yeah. our lives yeah so so there's the first one yeah, yeah. simplicity mm. um i'll just share this verse with you psalm 62 verse 10 says this though your riches increase do not set your heart on them so it's about reorientating yeah. your heart yeah. as well yeah it's fantastic Foc- all right focus discipline yeah. number two is submission submission these are not that sexy are these <laughs> words <laughs> but uh <laughs> but actually really powerful. So this is basically talking about suspending Mm. your own agenda in order to uh, expand your uh, leadership, influence, and capacity. Mm. Yeah. We, we're not, we're, we're better when we've got other people speaking to our lives yeah. Uh, and leading us yeah um we i guess we'll 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 sit in the chair of senior leader in some scenarios when we're the boss or it's our project yeah. or it's our small group or whatever context you guys are leading in but yeah. there are many times when you have to submit your life to another person yeah yeah which is a challenge. Any yeah. any experience on being challenged in that area? Well, you submit your life when you get married, don't you? You, you submit. Well, are you saying that that's a challenge? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to kind of hmm. ask the other person, the person you're married to, is it okay I do this? You can't just go off and do, do your own thing. Sure. You've, you're committed to someone mm-hmm. else now, so you have to kind of, you're in this together and you yeah. submit to them and... So yeah. it's less about control of the other person mm. and more about... It's a willingness, isn't it? The yeah. other person mm. being willing to submit. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that submission's got a bad rep, hasn't yeah. it? For like, it's Sounds the bad. most unpopular yeah. Yeah, yeah. thing Definitely. to do. Um, but um, I think there's, without being cheesy, real beauty in Definitely. it. When we don't just listen to ourselves, because yeah. I don't know about you, sometimes if I just listen to myself... I'd make all sorts of stupid Definitely. Um, You'd just be decisions. like horse riding. <laughs> just never get anything done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it is, it's mm, also about trust. Mm, definitely. Because you to submit your mm. life to a leader yeah. or to a vision, you know, yeah. we're, we're not, we've, again, the narrative of society is, is like got to get on the hustle, got to get on the grind, got to get stuff done, got to yeah. make things happen. For myself, I've got a vision, I've got a dream. Whereas this spiritual discipline is about saying, I do have a dream, but it has its place in a bigger dream. Mm. And the local church is the place, like the best place to do that, to submit the dreams of your own heart to the the leadership that God brings into your Mm. life and also into the expansive vision that um, God Mm. has, has called you to it's play true. your part in, yeah. Yeah, definitely. which is a challenge. <clears throat> yes. But what it does is it, mm. it wakes up the spiritual giant, or to use another analogy, it turns yeah. up the spiritual temperature. Yeah. If you're thinking like, mm. you know, um, spiritually yeah. I'm a bit dry or, mm. you know, I'm in a wilderness season, all that kind of language yeah. that we use, maybe the thing to do is not, you know, just keep striving, but actually mm. 
find a leader, yeah. find yeah. a friend, find someone who's wiser, older, yeah. stronger, whatever, yeah. and say, hey, I, I just want to yeah. sort of submit my yeah. life and my mm. vision to someone yeah. else so that I'm not just a lone ranger. Yeah, yeah. And that's the beauty of church, isn't it? That we've got yeah. so much richness around yeah. us yeah. that we can do that without yeah. perhaps starting some things that we want to do prematurely, yeah. um, but that we've got the wisdom around us to yeah. speak into that and yeah. say, hold back with that. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. that's yeah. good. It's not, it's not time for that yet. Yeah. The idea of this podcast is that you listen to it by yourself, but you actually talk about it with someone yeah. else. And so, yeah. you know, when you get to that stage, because that's what really brings this mm. podcast yeah. to life, it's not just the listening, it's the talking. Yeah. Yeah. And that is submission because you're yeah. basically saying, hey, here's my thoughts yeah. on these spiritual disciplines. Yeah. And you're actually opening, vulner- yeah. vulnerability kicks in, you're opening yourself yeah. up to someone going, oh, well, I thought this or yeah. I thought yeah. that. And all of a sudden you are richer, but um, but it is a discipline because yeah. it, it's easier, yeah. perhaps um, takes less work, yeah. less risk of, I don't know, appearing not as good as someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There's loads to it. Yeah, and we never really want to naturally do that, do we? No. Sure. Um, but um, yeah. there's so much um, on the other side of submission totally. that God wants to bless in our lives. Definitely. All right, number three. So we've had simplicity, we've had submission, and the third one, these words are not getting any more... Um, <laughs> sexy. Sexy, yeah. Uh, did you just say that then? I somewhere? did say that. <laughs> number three is solitude. <laughs> solitude. Wow. The idea of this, right is that, again, I sound like I'm having a downer on modern society and we should all grow our own veg. And live in a monastery. And live in a I'd house love, on a I'd hill. love to grow my own veg. And knit our own clothes. <laughs> I would love that. Do no, it. but what I'm saying is is that we've, um, we've counteracted boredom through technology yeah. to the point where it could potentially kill creativity. Mm. It could kill yeah. um, you know, moments of revelation and intimacy with God because we fill every second of our lives with people and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And this discipline um, of solitude is about saying, hey, I'm going to remove a few of those things. I'm going to remove some stuff. I'm going to silence a few voices. I'm going to mm-hmm. silence a few things that are filling the airwaves or the, you know, my brain yeah. um, to actually allow space for creativity. For example... You know, when I was a kid, if we had a dentist appointment, you go to the dentist mm-hmm. and in that, what felt like a lifetime in the waiting room, yeah. you either like made your own entertainment or you read Housekeeping magazine. <laughs> <laughs> there was a stash in the dentist waiting room. Now, you wouldn't dream of going mm. to the dentist with your kids without a phone for them to play mm. on. Yeah. You know, in the car journeys, yeah. it's like we've got everything prepped. Exactly. Whereas some of the best ideas you know, mm. come out of a moment of just like daydreaming. Yeah. yeah. Just thinking. Yeah. Got nothing to do. You know, you go on the train these days or public transport, everyone's heads mm. down, earphones in, no mm. space. Yeah. So I don't know, what can we do? How can we yeah. do this? We, yeah. Do we just all throw our phones in the bin? No. I'm guessing not. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I do, I um every day I'll um go out early and go for a run on my own outside and I just love mm. that space that I get yeah. to just think. And, and it really is true that when you're outside doing exercise, you, you're just at your most creative. Mm. I just find that I think, I think of things I would never have thought about if I wasn't outside yeah. exercising and running. So my space on my own is definitely when I'm going out running, mm. definitely. You, you did something recently, didn't you, where you basically did yeah. this discipline, you yeah. created some space. you want to just say about that? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago actually so it's really fresh and uh, we're in the middle of this series at church and uh, I just felt really challenged to create a little bit of space um, to hear from God to you know it's busy life isn't it when you've got family Mm. and work and ministry and I thought I just need a couple of days um, away found somewhere to go um, uh, that sounds a little bit extreme and I know that we can't always do this but um can we not have a little bit of time yeah. in our diaries where we have an appointment with God yeah. once a year, once a term? What, yeah, practically though, what what do you mean? Like find a space? Like yeah, well, it's not um, going for it's not going for a walk, is it? It was a bit more than that, weren't it? Yeah, I, I googled a place to go to that <laughs> that um 
uh, an apartment in oh, okay. the in yeah. the in the um, Derbyshire Dales with a nice view where I could see like fields and sheep and stuff <laughs> like that. Got my Bible, my journal, a book. Wrote a list of things that I wanted to do, yeah. like hear from God, pour my heart out, um, read um, Psalms. And uh, just uh, really get rid of um, mm. some uh, clogness up yeah. um, in my <laughs> some clogness up. Nobody wants clogness up in their life. <laughs> no, a, it's, it's, that's a good word. It's no, great. great, and I remember doing that mm. more when I was younger. And ma- and I think you know, just hearing that, like I need to do that even more now. I'll send you the link. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I did it on the cheap compared to you, but um, just the idea of just going away overnight. Yeah. What for one night and just removing all the technology yeah. and stuff like that just creates an, yeah. an amazing amount of space. You don't have to go away though. You can just go outside because I think being yeah. in the fresh air. Yeah. I, I thought being outside, being in the countryside, was yeah. a little bit overrated, and yeah. I just I didn't understand. You would rather go to the shopping. Yeah, I'd rather go to the, yeah the shops, Asta. and I didn't I didn't see the point. I didn't see what was good about it until I actually did it. Mm. And being outside in the fresh air, even if it's raining, mm. it it just does something. Yeah, so agreed. Powerful about being yeah. still, yeah. isn't there? And I know you know it says obviously, doesn't it, in Psalms about being still and knowing yeah. that He is God. Yeah, just brings peace into our hearts and calmness into yeah. every situation. Definitely, he deals with the clogged upness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the fourth one, the final one. So we've had simplicity, <laughs> submission, solitude, and the last one. They all begin with S because we are preachers. The last one is service. Amen. So this is basically about, it's like a, a, a step on from submission or it's like a, a different perspective on the submission because it's again about suspending your own agenda yeah. and looking to serve another person. Um, it's not servanthood. In my opinion, it's not just about making sure you do the lowliest of tasks. Um, you know, so the people who clean the toilets, they're the real servants and the mm, people yeah. who might be in front of the camera or, or on a microphone, they're not really servants. It's not really about that. I think it's about an attitude of your heart, which is basically how can I help or bring the best even out of another person? Yeah. So we, we have a um, a neighbor. Do you want to just say about our neighbor? Yeah, we've got a neighbor, David, because serving, it's not just serving in church. Mm-hmm. You've got a community around you that, that you can serve. And we have a, na- a neighbor called David who um, lives on his own and he's lived in his house since he was, was it three? Mm. And now he's in his 70s. And um, wow. he's lived with both his parents, but then they've died. So he's just on his own in the house. And we kind of have adopted him a little bit, haven't we? The kids talk to him all the time. So we've had him round for meals. I'll often make something for Paul and take some for David. And we just kind of feel that we should serve him don't, and look after him. And, yeah, it's not transactional. Just, We're yeah, not expecting No, anything. we don't want anything from yeah. him. We just want to make sure he's okay. Because he, he's got no heating. He's got... He's he's just lives quite a simple life, yeah, a really yeah. simple life. So he's not checking his Facebook status. <laughs> definitely not, <laughs> definitely not. But we just love to serve David, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the church, as Catherine's already said, is a great place to outwork this stuff, yeah. but not the only place. Mm. You can serve in church. There's many different ways you can do that. But if it's an attitude of your heart, you'll serve when you're at work. Mm. You'll serve yeah. with you with your mates. Whatever you're doing, you'll be thinking, how can I help? You know, how yeah. can I? Mm. help this person get the get the best out of this person yeah so there you go yeah. four things to do this is these are practical things that you can do and we're believing that as you put them into practice along with the other ones um that we'll start to hear the stories of what god yeah. is doing in you and through you because you have turned up the spiritual temperature yeah, you've yes. woken up the spiritual giant that is in you because you recognize that um well you're responsible yeah. yeah, for your own spiritual temperature. Yep, it's not you know at the mercy of whoever and whatever, mm. but you're saying I'm a leader, yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take responsibility. Mm. So thank you so much mm. for taking the time. I don't know where you've listened. Maybe you've been on the bus or you've been out for a run, uh, but um, yeah, it's a great investment. Maybe you were horse riding. 